Okay, so I've got my 13 police interceptor utility. It has the rear backup sensors. Um, however, they've never worked um, in the whole time I've had it. And this is what it does. So when I go to put in reverse, it gives me a message. Check rear park aid, okay? So it doesn't do any beeping. It doesn't do anything. Right now it's saying that it's on. Um, but then it will say it's off again. So it's got like a short or something in it. Um, so the best way to check this, there's a few things it could be. Uh, very first thing you wanna do is check the fuse. Um, so I'll show that real quick. All right, so, so our owner's manual says that the blind spot monitor, rear view camera, and reverse sensing system, is, which is what we're going for, is all in the same fuse, and that's fuse 34. Uh, and that is right there on the panel that is up under the dash. Um, if you don't know how to look check fuses, uh, you can look up a different video for that, but um, that's where this one's located. It's on the inside under the kick panel and then up. Um, so, but I've already checked it and I know that's not the issue, uh, but definitely check that first because it's the easiest thing and, and it could be the issue. Now, it, according to this though, if that were the issue, if you have a backup camera, um, the backup camera would not be working as well. So, uh, you know, I don't have a backup camera, but that would be an indicator if that goes out. So, um, we're going to pop off the bumper and... All right, so these screws um, are a 5.5 millimeter, um, but if you don't have one, a 730 seconds uh, also works. All right, so I already got this all side loosened up. So pretty much you take your 5.5, take out these two top screws uh well you gotta take actually all of them out um so like what five and then underneath here you just pull this back and you uh, put a stubby short eight millimeter ratchet in there uh and remove that from that black padding um then this guy pops off and these are just little pop-on clips that you don't have to you know you just pressure pull them and then right here you take out one of these plastic screws. Um, I already took this one out too. Uh, and then you're gonna have your uh, tail light. You pop out, there's a cap here, cap there, pop them out. And then there are two more, I think eight millimeter screws. Um, you can just set your headlight, you don't have to disconnect it. You can just set it inside if your lit gate's up. And then there's another screw right there. That's another plastic screw. And they suck to get out, but um, I used a pair of pliers on mine. Anyway, and then now the bumper's free. I just have to do the other side and we can drop it down and I'll just set it down on the ground right here. This is also a good time before you have to do that. Um, reach under and unplug your harness. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's got, all it is is a tab like that. And unplug it. All right, so I went ahead and pulled the sensors out of that one and that one. And I noticed something right away. This is the one, well, this is a good one. Notice in there, three prongs. Look at this one that was on the far left, two prongs. And you probably can't see in there very well. So let me see if I can get it to focus. There's a little bit of blue corrosion. There we go. Where it, right where it snapped off. So this sensor is no good. So what's happening is we're turning on the system and instantly detecting that it's not, you know, it's not making contact for one of the three wires. And so what it does is it shuts down your system and it's going to be shut down until the next cycle where you open your door, close the door, turn the key on, and then it's going to try over again. But, um, so I was getting an initial beep and then it would say, Oh, nope, there's a fault. And it would stop. So I'm going to check the other two to verify that they also don't have problems, but for sure this one's getting replaced. I got this harness. That's all it is. Um, I got it on eBay. I think I paid like 30 bucks. So pretty inexpensive. That's the plug for each of the, uh, each of the sensors. And then we've got the main harness right there. Uh, the plug for this is on the rear passenger side, uh, up under the bumper. Um, so it's a pretty easy fix. Um, pretty inexpensive too. Uh, now when you're ordering this though, here's the part number for if you just have the four parking sensors. Um, there you go. 
Uh, there are multiple harnesses. So if you have the auto park, um, that's going to be its own, its own harness as well. And it, they're not interchangeable as far as I know. So, uh, you're not going to, if you have, you know, just like the one, like I have, make sure you're not buying a used harness or something that is, uh, meant for, uh, automatic parallel park assist. Okay. So, so I got to put it all back together. Um, uh, there's no sensors available in my state up here in Alaska, so it's going to be a few days before I can get one shipped up. Um, so here's my old sensor. I went ahead and went forward with changing out the harness um, because I figured, you know, if the terminals were getting corroded like that in the sensor, high chance that um, either there has begun some corrosion or will be soon. I mean, and it was just so caked with dirt that there's a good chance that water seeped in at some point um and like mud so and you know it was 30 bucks so i get a new new harness now um the ebay knockoffs i found that i'm gonna be replacing this one with i want to say it was like 30 bucks for four um i'm only gonna change out the one uh but it'll be nice to have the three on hand um otherwise i could just buy a single used one for 20 bucks but you know it seems like it makes more sense to have you know some spares so I went ahead and left it out because this one is won't be insanely easy, but I can actually, I felt I can get my finger behind there and I'll be able to, I should be able to fish after I plug this in, I should be able to fish it up and snap it in. Um, so I went ahead and just put everything back together so I can be using it for the next week until it arrives. Um, okay, our replacement sensors came in. Here's the one I'm gonna replace in there. So I'm just gonna try to fish it up from underneath. All right. Got it installed there. Let's test it. So to test it, all we're gonna do, apply the e-brake, or you know, if you have another person that can help you, put the key to the on position, flip it in reverse. Let's get rid of that. Look, I can now have control over turning it off and on, which is a good sign we didn't have that before. Okay, we're gonna see if we can hear it beeping from back here. Yep, I don't know if you can hear that. Cool. That's it. That's all there is to troubleshooting these things. Um, they're pretty. Uh, they're pretty st straightforward. You know, only three pins. Um, anyone can do it and I didn't need any special tools or anything. Um, so, you know, like I said, I changed out the harness and part of me thinks that the harness might have had issues too, because after I changed out the harness, even though the sensor was still bad, um, the, the, uh, I would get a beep when I'd first turn the car on and put it in reverse before it would like shut down the system, which I didn't have originally so i might have had a combination of the harness and the sensor but you know both were cheap fixes and i'm just happy to have a uh, fix so hopefully this helps you and uh, good luck with yours